time to rise until the end of time. As Juno rats make a mountain out of a molehill, Final Fantasy XIV goes down the tubes for their latest DLC, which was called Dawn Trail. Now, Stephen, I don't know if you're a Final Fantasy fan. I mean, it started before it started before I was born, <laughs> folks. Bro, I'm playing Final Fantasy One. I. I bought that game twice because I wore the first one out on my NES. I Ooh. love Final Fantasy. I played it up to seven, and then I kind of went on and off. Mm-hmm. All right, Final Fantasy Seven, seven is king. All right, mm. Mags, Magitech Mags. Um, and, uh, but I didn't I actually didn't get into 14. Um, mm. I would have if I'd had the time, but I have heard about this controversy. And uh, do you do what do you want to explain it uh, before? We well, go I heard about it through Hypno, who is a big Final Fantasy fan who got into Final cool. Fantasy 14 as it started. Although, from what I saw from his perspective, I think it was a bunch of journo rats making a mountain out of a molehill because the uh, the main character, the voice of that main character for the English mouthpiece version happens to be a tranny demon. And then okay. some journo rat discovered this, made it a big palaver on, you know, internet journalism. Not you even... What's... Mm, go on. I mean, you know what's sad about it, right, is mm-hmm. that Actually, I watched that video actually from mm-hmm. Hypno, um, mm-hmm. and I completely concur with the idea that uh, having so- the, the character itself is not human; it's it's, it's a beast of mm. some type, right? A furry, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, a furry, yeah. Mackinac draws. Don't get excited. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, but to have someone who is going through that type of therapy, that type of transition, who has an, an odd voice, they're going to have an odd voice, right? Um, but to, it's almost like it's almost alien. It doesn't really, it doesn't sound human. You know, it's, mm. it's almost glutteral. And so to have that person cast as the voice actor for that part yeah, actually kind of fits, right? And if you're talking about including people like that into uh, these spaces, into, you know, hiring spaces, which they've never been excluded from, um, you know, it, it's it, then to turn it into a virtue signaling campaign, then to take something that, was healthy. This is what these this is what these narco demons do, y'all. To take something that was healthy, nobody needed to know. Nobody needed to know this person was trans. Nobody needed to know any of that. They could have looked at the work the person did, the voice actor, and just uh, gotten an opinion simply from that. But no, somebody out there is in their fifis and wants to piss somebody off because they have unresolved childhood issues. And so they have to wave around, this person's trans, this person's trans. Look, in your face, this person's trans, and if you don't like it, you're evil. No, you're starting shit for no reason. For no reason whatsoever. Manufacturing a controversy to get the oxygen of attention that these uh, internet geno rats uh, crave. Yes, because they're looking for negative fuel, right? First off, Okay, the idea of journalism and it, it, it's some type of journalism. I mean, it's a slur now. I had I it had is. Peter Pishk on uh, Reality Based, and he studied journalism and has been a journalist for many, many years, even worked with the likes of the USA Today. And uh, when we had a good talk about the nature of journalism, I said, personally, journalism is dead, and the journalism, or being called a journalist... Is like a slur. It's like you're you're yeah. calling that as a pejorative nowadays, and that that yeah. reputation has stuck a lot, especially over the past and, eight years. And this is all right. And I mean, just to go, just to offshoot, just for a moment. And this is why these people do what they do to take credibility and power and strength away from the base of these words. Racists don't mean nothing now, any mm-hmm. day nowadays. It should. Um, Sexists don't mean anything, and it should. Uh, woke woke has been taken from a very positive term a very enlightened term in the 90s to what it is now and it's all about taking things that that we get gain enlightenment or strength something or something that has something that has a profound a word that has a profound impact on us and creates uh and summons the idea or summons the uh the construct of if you are called a racist, that's a that's, that's a horrible thing, right? It's supposed to be a horrible thing. Well, the, everybody's a little racist. I don't give a fuck who you are, uh, but you know, you, you, you. But if you're called that, it's supposed to mean something. 
and now doesn't mean anything. Same thing with journalism. And we've seen that from the, in the fall of the West, especially, um, you know, 24 hour coverage of uh, Operation Desert Shield in 1990, 1990, 91, um, right? And CNN. That oh, meant Desert something. Storm when they Desert invaded Storm. when Shield they attacked Storm, yeah. Iraq for occupying Kuwait. Yeah. Desert right. Storm. Right. So I mean, but that meant something. That was like, oh my God, 24 hour news coverage. They realized how much how impactful that was in society. Here we are 30 years later. And they have taken that and they have used it as a way to garner negative attention, sensationalism, negative fuel. No, journalism today is not it, it it's looked at. Because it's not in the in a in a main in a very large way, it is not what it once was. It's you know it's not giving you unbiased fact with maybe a little bit of opinion, a little mm-hmm. you know at the end a little little cliff note of opinion, which is fine for I think for for a journalist. Uh, but it's become all opinion, and not only that, but smearing, complete smear, complete outright lies. And we're living in the inside. Yes, well, and hopefully this is, and again, E. Ehrman, and this is why. Uh, by the way, I didn't understand A either, um, and this is why. Uh, you know, it's important to call these things out, to be supportive in the chats, guys. If you feel like you want to say something, you have a voice, create a podcast, create a channel, use your phone, do it, make your voice heard, guys. Just, we all we need to all speak out in, mm-hmm. uh, in our own way. Uh, but if uh, if we do not, we do not fight this. We have seen, yes. we've seen from as the journalistic institution has fell, just like our modern myths, the, the, they will double down, triple down, quadruple down on their narratives. And this is why these terms don't mean anything. They're destroying them wholeheartedly. I'm uh, sorry, we're going back to journalism. But when you're talking about the, uh, the journalistic integrity from people who are criticizing gaming or people who have comments on gaming, and you take a very positive experience, which is, I think, a positive experience. I support, I support people with gender dysphoria. Right, what legit people with gender dysphoria? I'm a '90s mm-hmm. liberal, y'all. I'm a I'm a north I'm a northeast liberal. This is what it is. I support people who have that dysphoria, but those people are less than one percent of the population. That is a very small group of people mm-hmm. who see right. So I, I, my issues with those who are being gaslit and who are just gay and like to put things up their ass and decide they want to put a gash in it. Like I don't understand. I the the, the fake ones, the ones that sensationalize it and use it. You take a positive experience with someone who has dysphoria, working in a mainstream game, doing a character that they're kind of, they're kind of, you know, fits because of the changes in their voice and, and what they do. Didn't need to put, didn't need to put a picture of this 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 transgender person. Didn't need to use this transgender person, uh, you know, like profile them as that. No, mm. let the art speak for itself. What do the activists do? The ones who really don't care about anyone but themselves, but creating trauma, but creating a, a false, you know, uh, false problems. Uh, that What did they do? She immediately threw the flag out there, threw the rainbow flag out there, and started pointing out the figure that this, literally, this is what she did. This person is not a person. This person is a transgender. Mm. This person is not a working individual doing this part. This person is a transgender. Put them right in a box and completely, uh, which is demoralizing. It, it, it takes the identification away from a person as an individual and puts them in a box and they are just this, and then using that as a cudgel to whip up hysteria. And the backlash certainly fuels that to such an extent, folks. That well, that's Final, what they're looking for. Well, Final Fantasy fourteen now has uh, mixed reviews on, on Steam, as far as I'm aware, as of the making of this live stream. So it has certainly caused some kind of of impact although if you look at square enix and you look at final fantasy Mm -hmm. as a franchise it has been going in a a certain direction and despite you know final fantasy 16 being released they have been making a good few remakes and folks when you run out of ideas you remake things a uh, mm-hmm. great example would be the Dead Space remake. Perfectly fine remake, but perfectly unnecessary. I personally think they decided to do that over at EA because former Dead Space developers set up their own studio and created something called Callisto Protocol. Fine game. Unfortunately, they released it and it didn't work properly. So <laughs> EA had nothing to worry about on that uh, Front. But if they make a second Callisto protocol, you bet your ass there's going to be a second 
Deep Space uh, remake of Deep Space uh, 2, because uh, that's how these egregious organizations work when something challenges them, especially when it's from something that was once part of them. They're going to be very annoyed at that challenge, and they're going mm -hmm. to try and, and fill the gap before it blows up. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you got to fill gaps. Mm. You know, sometimes, Ryan, mm. you know, big loads to fill gaps, man. Oh, my goodness. Just goes to show that it takes all sorts to be a content creator. And that, for the most part, very few exceptions, everyone is welcome on reality base. Doesn't matter how black, female, crippled, or Jewish you are, everyone wow. is welcome. Uh, from my perspective, though, Square Enix are desperate. That's why they they moved from exclusively to, to PlayStation to all platforms for their projects because they are bleeding out and they cannot afford to bleed out no. financially. They're not a Disney. They're not a BBC. If they have project after project failing to deliver financially, they could well go well under. this is the thing they have a strong fan base you have the final fantasy fan base is intense mm. man what's going mm. on man uh you have you know it you have they have that it, it's it's a shame to see it, it's self-destructing at this point mm. you know mm. so, absolutely yeah man. absolutely man. t virus oh, man. is a, a fine fellow creator especially for all the ladies watching he he really knows right. how to how to attract them lovely ladies, one of them being Toasty with the Mosty. I hope you are yeah. doing oh. well. Mm. Toasty, are you kidding me? Mm. I've been watching you for like a year. I'm a lurker. Mm. <laughs> Toasty, cool. is, Toasty is a fine lady. Her, her yeah. son keeps sabotaging her shows, though, in like blooper ways, but that's perfectly <laughs> fine. We, we all have our uh, bloopers, and yes, we try mm. our best to be inclusive triple l because saying your name too often will cause me to have a seizure a blooper moment for lack of a mm. of a better term but from from my perspective folks i treat this wokeness as a disease and it is spreading which is why i really do sympathize with the more revolutionary path to being the change you want to see in that the disease will spread, it will infect everything, it will kill everything it touches. Sweet Baby Inc. is a great example of that. And then once they're all dead, the parasite won't have anything to feed off of, and then it will mm -hmm. die on its own or go somewhere else, maybe to the maybe to the east, maybe to Japan or China or Russia or the Philippines. Uh, and while they do that, we can then rebuild, learn from the mistakes of the past, and then find a cure to this mental disease well it's it's going to be a constant battle because they will like i said triple down quadruple down they'll keep doing that um uh, they will continue to do this for as long as they can all right mm. uh literally okay you know this is a take this into the microcosm of dealing with these personality types in relationships um they will continue to use people for as long as they can use people gaslight destroy until they get to a point where they are old and infirmed and they've screwed over so many people that nobody wants to take care of them. And they just basically die on their own. They die lonely and, and on their own, you know? And that is what, the, that's what these, that's what these, the, the woke, I guess, the, you know, the, the, the reef, the, the term that it has become, mm. um, that is what this culture will do. As long as there are people out there, raw, raw for the Jerry Springer show, as long as you have damaged individuals who want to live in their warped world, in their funhouse mirror of lies and see things the way that they need to see them because they're, they're out because of their damaged fifis. As long as you have people like that, this model will be sustained. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. It is going to take dismantling what we call the industries now. It's going to take the fall of Rome in mm -hmm. order for something better to arise, which is why it's so important, guys, support your independent creators out there, no matter what lunch table they sit at, what they think of me, I don't give a shit. If you like them, support them, share out links for their work, share out links for their channels, because that is the future of entertainment. I, I'll answer this question before we move on to 3.2, which is uh, quite something, because we'll highlight an agent of the age entertainment establishment coming back or crawling out of some 
dark place. And that question is from Mephisto X. There's a reason I don't call it a cult, because a cult is, in my view, an essential part of developing a culture. It's a foundation. Um, what, what did I used to call it? Uh, a, a culture is nothing but a cult that's matured over time. I mean, culture is a mix of, of history and a belief system. Better way of putting that would be religion, but that usually sets off a few people, if you say that word. But that's why uh, I'm, I'm actually quite a fan of cults, because without them, there's no possibility of you ever building a culture. It just needs to mature and not turn into a death cult. So that's the reason why I don't call wokeness a cult. I call it a disease because everyone who is infected by it ends up either destroying themselves but, or anything they're a part of. Yes, but you know what the sad thing about it is? <laughs> the sad mm. thing is these these privileged white women, right? Mm. These the uh, the and these these self hating white males who have been taught that, that who have been taught this by liberals. Um, they are the ones who took this term that came from the black community, mm. woke. And then turned it into the poison, turned that, that, that word and that term into the poison that it is being projected and used as today. When well, at to one time, oh. it was a very healthy term. Hmm. Well, to when, answer, when a black person calls me woke, when I'm out on the street and somebody's a black person calls me woke, I'm like, thank you. Because I understand what they're saying. Like, yeah, I, I see it for what it is. I understand. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I pressed the wrong one. Yes, I'll take that advice, uh, Terrence. But I will answer this question from Terence, and I would answer that by saying a lot of attractive women from all over the world would seek to come to America to, to get the uh, casting couch treatment from you. Moving on. You know, to, to... Uh, Terrence's picture gives me the idea that, like, you know, you're, you get hired for cuck videos, don't you, bud? What? I mean, no, I'm, I'm not hating. I'm not hating. I'm just saying big old black chest, big old beard like that. I'm just... I'll say there's a niche out here for you, bro. Let's 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 <laughs> let's move on to three point two. He's banging wives. He's banging wives. That's all I'm saying. All right. Fifty-five <laughs> minutes. My oh my. Ryan with his charm, rogues with their flair. Reality based so sharp. All I do is hear reality based. Rogue entertainment. Together we'll be a favorite. Feel the vibes on to rise. Until the end of time.